Somebody is knocking on the door of World War III and trying to poke Vladimir Putin like a bear with a stick. Here in the next decade, during the next Great War, when you're being told all the patriotic reasons why you should send your sons and daughters off to war and why we need to make all these sacrifices, I hope you'll remember that the reason we went to war was not what they've been telling you, but because of the kinds of things this guy has been doing. I want to go after those things that Assad sees as his personal power base. The CIA aligned with political interest, trying to stir things up in the hopes of containing world order. We need to make the, the Iranians pay a price in Syria. We need to make the Russians pay a price. We make them pay the price by killing, killing Russians? Yes. And, and Iranians. killing Iranians? Yes. Covertly. This kind of strategy is going on and it's so unstoppable, this guy has the audacity to say it out loud and on television. I'm not advocating assassinating him. I'm advocating going after the, what he thinks is his power base, right? And what he needs to survive. I want him to think about, this is not gonna end well for me, right? I wanna put pressure on him. I wanna put pressure on the Iranians. I wanna put pressure on the Russians. And what's more, they're actually doing it. Here's what happened very recently in Moscow. Now I saw this up on Shit Hits the Fan Plan. Putin's favorite chauffeur killed in an accident, exactly as former CIA director described on TV. And they've got graphic footage of this traffic accident in Moscow where a random oncoming car swerves into the middle lane and just so happens to take out the person who's said to be Putin's favorite chauffeur. They showed this graphic footage of the crash and this head-on collision with opposing traffic, it just looks strange. It looks very staged, like either the driver intentionally swerved to hit this vehicle or possibly the car was hacked electronically. But either way, one of Putin's closest guys was just killed, just blocks from the Kremlin, pretty much to send him a message and show him that they can get to him anytime, anywhere. Or at least that's the intention. And what's really, really creepy about it is how it matches almost exactly the tactics outlined by Mike Morrell. I want to scare Assad. So I want to um, go after his presidential guard. I want to bomb his offices in the middle of the night. I want to destroy his presidential helicopter. I want to make him think we're coming after him. It's this policy of taking out the people closest to the leaders that they want to target, with Putin at the very top of the list. You don't tell the world about it, right? But you make sure they know it in Moscow and Tehran. How else can you take this but as a threat? They are trying to antagonize Putin. They've openly talked about their intention for a long time of trying to antagonize Iran. They've been trying to oust Assad by any means possible, and they haven't been successful so far, which means they're getting pretty far down the desperation list in the playbook. And when I speak of the playbook, if you have nowhere else to look, you can look to the Brookings Institution, Witch Path to Persia, which pretty much spells out 15 or 20 ways of stirring up a war with Iran. It's disgusting and I just thought you had a right to know the next time someone you love is sent to war, possibly dies, when this country never sees good days again, these kinds of people have been just purposefully doing this stuff. I want, I want to bomb his, I want to um, go after, um, I, want to, I, want to, I want him to think, I want to, um, I want to destroy his presidential aircraft. Here's the other thing I want to do. Um, I want to um, go after, I want to, I want to, I want to go after, I want to, I want to. A lot of the people in this country who are working in the shadows with the intelligence of several other countries, they would love to see Putin lose it. They'd love to see him give in to the anger and lash out and give them a reason to really start something. And I guess if he doesn't take the bait, they're going to just keep on poking him and poking him with a stick. And what do you expect a bear to do after a while? They are counting on and engineering a world war and creating enemies for no reason.